Now, in the subcontinent, they don't have any arrangement for ladies uh, in the masjids. This is wrong. And this is part of them, unfortunately, not following the sunnah. So many wrong practices in the subcontinent. People there, in majority, do not follow the Quran and the sunnah. They'd rather follow their peers, their scholars, their leaders, who themselves may not have sufficient knowledge of the Quran and the sunnah, but they follow what they had learned from their ancestors, from their forefathers. So their religion, their conviction is based on imitation, not on conviction and belief. And this is very dangerous. On the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal would not ask you about the aqidah or about the belief or what so-and-so scholar or leader or peer used to follow. Allah Azza wa Jal would ask you as an individual, what was your response to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أَجَبْتُمُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal would call them out on the Day of Judgment and ask them, what have you responded and answered the prophets? So you cannot say, well, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal said so-and-so, Imam Shafi'i said so-and-so, Abu Hanifa said so-and-so. If you are presented with the verse from the Quran and you can read that, it's in black and white. Or you're presented with an authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in Bukhari, in Muslim, in Tirmidhi, in Nasa'i. Yet you reject it and say, no, 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 I follow my madhab. Akhi, if you are a layman and can't differentiate between a verse and a hadith, yes, you go ahead and follow your madhab. But if you're an intellectual person, an educated person, you can do your own research and you are assisted to do so by a scholar, or a student of knowledge who has no hidden agenda rather than to show you the right path, then this is definitely unacceptable. So we would urge and call the people and the Muslims all over the world, especially in the subcontinent, where they have strong conviction and belief. They love Allah Azza wa The Muslims in India and in Bangladesh and Pakistan, I am so astonished with their commitment to Islam with their love for this deen. I see them in my masjids here in, in, in the local areas when they come out of the masjid and they see someone begging. Never you, ever you would find anyone passing by without putting a rial or something similar to that in the hand of this beggar. Though he is a beggar. We know most likely he's a professional beggar, but out of their love and compassion, they do this. How they observe the Sunnah prayers, that is almost similar to Fard. And this is one of the wrong misconceptions, but it's still, we praise them for, that, for it. When people come and say, uh, Sheikh, we pray 17 rak'ahs for Isha. I said, wow, this is a lot. Isha is only four rak'ahs. He said, we pray this before and this after, and then the Shafi and the water. And, and they put a lot of prayers into one, but they pray it religiously. They are committed to it. So there are so many things that are good about them. But when you don't have commitment to Quran and Sunnah, when you don't have full adherence to the Quran and Sunnah, this is when shaitan comes. And he distorts Islam. He manipulates people, unfortunately. And this is why the vast majority there are warned of Ahl al-Hadith of the Salafiyya, of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah. They say, don't follow these. They hate the Prophet ﷺ. They hate the madhabs and the school of thoughts and the maslaks. All of this is blatant lies. None of it is correct. But this is pulling the carpet from underneath their feet. The, their scholars and their peers and their leaders who are making money out of the masses, when they see that their congregation are following the Quran and the Sunnah, this means that they're going to get away from their grip and their control. And this is something they don't want or like. And this is why they warn and they tarnish the reputation of those who follow the Quran and Sunnah. And this is wrong.